hello guys hello guys um i hope you sharp with there sorry i couldn't give you a video yesterday but it's a monday i can still make an analysis and tell you what i think on you know one or two charts so that we prepare for this week and if you're new here just make sure that you watch this video throughout so that i take you through the complete breakdown of us 100 or nasdaq just so that you can see how i do things in terms of you know using the top-down approach to tackle charts and still come up with what high odd trade setup so and Make sure that you subscribe there and also if you're interested you can just text me preferably on telegram because that's where i'm mostly active and then we will take it from there so let's get started so the first chart that i'm going to do will be nasdaq which i know everyone likes this one and even on this chart we've always been um you know we always do analysis on this one so let's just delete some of the drawings we got from our uh, in our previous video so let's start so you know always we do um, the highest chart then we move and work our way down until we get to the smallest time frames there where we can uh, take trades. So this is how our monthly chart looks like. You know, we've always been, you know, going through this one and, you know, the drawings, especially when the higher time frames, they will always be the same. So I'm not going to waste a lot of time here. I'll just go straight and say, remember, when you're doing your higher time frames, you need to be able to identify your key structures. So those sensitive areas where the price has got high chances of bouncing from them. So this is what I teach the guys in the in the, in my mentorship. You know, I will tell you where these areas form, how they look like, and how you're supposed to mark them, so that even when you are alone, you know how to do these things. That's why I don't give signals. I want you to be able to do what I do on your own. That's what I'm for. So this is our monthly chart. So the support will take this one here. I don't think it was taken. Okay, I think it was taken out. Let's just check there. Let's see if we put it the lowest point. Yes, that support was taken out, meaning if it's taken out, you have to now move lower than that. So which means the support on this chart will be this one here. This is your monthly support, and this is your monthly resistance. And it did this resistance, remember it did what? It pushed down and broke the support. Keep that in mind. And this time frame is what? It's bearish. So meaning for long term. We would, uh, we, 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 we mustn't act surprised when you see the price still dropping like that because of what it is still bearish. But we are not saying that is what is going to happen because remember the price can turn from anywhere. So even from where it is, it can still push up and do that. But we cannot predict such movements because of what we don't predict that key structures are going to be taken out. So here we just need to say this is our resistance, this is our support, and this is our bearish turn line. And the price is bearish, meaning if the price is bearish, on a longer run or at least in the next coming months or so this has got higher chances of what going there for as long as it does not challenge the bearish trend line it will always remain bearish so meaning if on your smaller time frames i do understand that when you move down, down to your smaller time frames you can get setups to take a trace to the upside that's totally fine but don't make a mistake of doing what <clears throat> of saying i'm buying now on that smaller time frame setup and then you say i will execute i mean i will i will exit the trade next week march you see now you're going long term and the long term time frames don't agree with what you're doing so that's why you cannot if you look at this long term time frame which is your monthly there's nothing here that is pointing long term bullish move so you see that's why when you're trading your smaller time frames those buy setups you're getting don't push them too much so just target the next opposite structures on those time frames that you're trading and then that's enough money that's enough profit because the moment you start pushing it too much you will end up interfering with the bigger time frames that don't even agree with what you are doing i hope that makes sense so that is all that we have here on our monthly chart we can see the price is still has a long way to go to the support and then at the same time it still has some decent space to push up maybe towards the resistance or the, towards the bearish channel so it can go either way so we are allowed to take trades to the upside and to the downside on our smaller time frames if we get to them now this is our weekly chart so it's becoming interesting remember on the weekly chart okay so on this one if we were to take uh, an area of of, of 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 support it will be this one here du, 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 du. remember we always need to know the nearest support and the nearest resistance it will be this one here so that's your weekly area of what of support and this is your weekly area of resistance support and weekly is also what bearish with a bearish turn line somewhere there and we are bearish we hit the support the price is bouncing from that and it's giving us what the the bullish vibes because we have what bullish engulfing as you can see here the 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 the, the, the bullish candlestick or the white candlestick is the one that is swallowing the previous candlesticks so that bullish engulfing is what you would expect from what 
from a bullish structure which is what a bullish support so that's why if you've been holding those sell trades you need to understand that now you've hit your next opposite structure yes you understand your weekly i mean your monthly is still very much bearish this time frame is still very, very much bearish but you cannot neglect the key structures that it is touching which is why when you touch those structures you need to make sure that your time of selling is up you need to lock up uh, you know lock in some profits and take out some profit also and then maybe you can just leave one trade just in case this zone is taken out but you can't leave all your trades open and pretend like you don't see what is happening here because that's where you're going to be disappointed sometimes we as as as, as, as uh, traders you know we, we you know there are times where the market will give you a sign to say look at this look at me there's something happening here i might go up i might go against you and then you still say no i trust my setup that is not going to happen it has to drop that is where you're going to be disappointed. You not you don't dictate to the market what it should do. The market will do whatever it wants to do whenever it wants to do it. So it's not up to you. It's not up to you. That's why you need to use what the market is giving you and say, because the market is saying the support is here, the resistance is here, I'm taking a buy trade based on the market structure. I can see this, the resistance. You hit that, I take my profit, I exit. That is how you should do it. All right. So this since this one is very much bearish and... You know uh, the trend line is still intact the nearest resistance is up there so remember if you want to join the bears they have you have to join them at the right place you cannot just join in the middle of nowhere if this is your execution time frame you are waiting here you are waiting there to say what once the price touches that i'll be in and that resistance is very strong because of what if you look back we once had the trend line here we once had an area of support there and that area of support was taken out by this move which is started by what the very same resistance we're talking about so which means this resistance is very strong because what it, of what it did when it pushed the price to the downside so that is why if you the price was to go up there you you know it will increase your odds to take a sell from there because of that this time frame yes you can have two bullish uh, candlesticks but for as long as those bullish candlesticks does not uh, break bearish uh, trend line or it doesn't break uh, resistance then it's just a pullback that's why you can still trade and hope that the downtrend will continue so that's why i'm saying if you want to sell you can sell from around there right so that is all that we can say with regards to our weekly chart so let's do the next one which is a daily one yes this is where things start to get interesting because of what you can see that the structure is changing the candlestick where the candlesticks we've got a lot now which means it gives us you know a lot a lot to think of before we make decisions right so now let's look at the daily chart you see this you see the same approach that i'm doing is the same approach that i'm teaching that's why I, at the beginning of the video i mentioned that i want people to be able to analyze the same way that i do right i don't want to analyze for them tell them what to do by side because the day for instance i'm not feeling well or something happens to me it means if i stop trading your trading is also gone you see which is not a good thing you shouldn't rely on me so i teach you how to do things so that even when i'm not there you yourself will still be able to do what will still be able to analyze on your own all right let's get started so this is our daily chart we're still going to use the same approach which is what as identifying the key structures on this chart so on this time frame we can take this one here it's our resistance and you can take maybe somewhere around there to say there's something happening there but you all depend on whether you you take this as a zone or what if this is your zone then it was broken and also the bearish trend line was taken out then it means what uh, your, your your daily is bullish then this becomes a support but if not then we can't take that one we just have to go back to the one that pushed up and did what and and and, and broke the trend line so for me i look at this one as something so i'll just take this as my nearest support this as my nearest resistance and and say that currently daily is pushing up daily is bullish then i can bring a bullish trend line and put it there and say this is my support and because we are bullish, I'll be looking to take buy trades there. That's when you start doing your assessment. And with the guys in the group, the current group, don't worry. This is what you're going to be doing tonight. You are assessing your zone to say that, yes, I do believe and understand that uh, currently this time frame is bullish. And this is a support. And I want to buy from this support. That's where assessment comes in to say that, does this support, yes, it's a support, but does it really qualify, you know, so that I can risk, you know, does it really allow me to risk, uh, is it, good enough for me to risk my money from it you see then you will see that the guys from the previous groups they will say yes it's a good zone to take uh trades from it because of what the risk to reward you know consolidation away and stuff like that so that's what we use to do what to assess a zone so this is a good zone we are allowed to take trades from there because of what even when you check uh on this bigger time frames the weekly remember there 
uh, resistance is still up there so this price coming down right now it's not coming from a weekly zone and it's not even coming from a daily zone either because the daily zone is up there so it's still a space maybe this will be what our push to that daily resistance and even to the weekly resistance so that we can get a deeper pullback but we will see how the price reacts when it gets there all right so that is what you can expect from this time frame which is what it is bullish we are trying to reach for that resistance we are coming from this support and for me to join this bullish move i'll just have to wait for a pullback so that i catch the next impulse move should it happen so let's do the our favorite time frame which is what which is our our h4 right yes there was one guy i can't remember who it was in one of the groups that asked me to say i think it's the current group who was it i can't remember where they were asking me about a gap you can see here on, on friday when the market closed the price was there and then we don't know what happened over the weekend that is why i always tell them that you know you can get a gap when the market opens because of what all the pressure from the weekend and the market couldn't uh, move so it means when the market opens all that pressure is just going to kick in at once and in this case it pushed up all the way until there so imagine the market closes here but it opens there look at the gap and this is h4 right so that's why it pushed up there and then it started dropping and then someone was asking me about should you get a zone there and then buy because it's a strong one because of the gap and then i say yes the, the zone you know the gap is going to form by closing the gap it's not a must it all depends on the momentum so and again that thing of saying you close your gap and then you do this it's not always the case it still depends on what the overall market structure all right so here this is what we have on this time frame uh, at some point uh, when we're doing the analysis the market was still playing around there and we did have something like this a lower low which means we did have actually had what we call a bearish trend line because of what i'm saying that lower low and when we had the bearish trend line then a move from this guy here is the one that pushed up and broke that trend line so meaning this is a very nice area of support and is the closest one we got because of what it achieved it actually moved up and remember at some point at some point i hope you'll agree with me here at some point we had this trend line there and we had this as our area of support and then it pushed the price up and then we we we, we broke it we broke it this became a resistance and then broken this became a resistance then when you pushed up we broke all of that so which means this support actually broke an area of resistance and it also broke what it broke the nearest uh, i mean the the, 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 the the bearish trend line so because of that it becomes a very valid and strong area of support and in terms of a trend line you can put it here or you can put it there it's fine for as long as it passes at this point as your second point on the trend line so now currently if we check where we're we going to place our nearest area of resistance oh you can see that we're actually bouncing from a nice area of resistance there and the area of resistance that we're bouncing from is it strong the answer would be yes why because it is the one that push look at the take off from that zone look at the take off it pushed down strongly all right so it is a very strong area of what of resistance that was touched there and then the price started falling which is why i will always say to you guys when you are trying to take a trade it doesn't matter what time frame you're doing you could have had maybe you've been holding from here but now you know you are hitting opposite structure why don't you take some of your profits why don't you lock in some of your profits because no one knows how that the price is going to react from those uh, key areas so that's our area of resistance it is still holding and this is our nearest area of support on this time frame so this is the support this is the resistance and maybe this is the trend line so what is the plan the plan is that our daily is bullish weekly is bullish weekly zone is still far if we want to join the, the bearish move and the daily is bullish uh the h4 also bullish. the weekly is the one that is bearish sorry so because we are we're saying these two structures are still bullish we are allowed to take a buy from somewhere around there and then maybe it will push up and still when it pushes up we are still going to exit here because we don't know whether it's going to be broken so that the price goes up towards your daily zone towards your weekly zone we don't know that so that is why when the price hits the next opposite structure we are out if you missed that sell there at the top even though i don't think you had reasons to sell especially if you're trading h4 as your execution time frame maybe those that are trading uh, m15s or a different time frame a lower one they could have had maybe they had a, a, a chance to sell there but for me i didn't have anything if i'm executing on h4 so this is all that we have on our on our our our, our uh, nasdaq i mean let me try and do it this way and maybe let's do one more time frame i just want to mark so we can mark it like that and we can even mark our support as well 
just so that when we're doing the h1 we will know exactly where these structures are so that we don't trade against them so there is your trend line so this is what you're having on your h4 and in conclusion we said if it bounces from to that trend line and we get that confirmation we are going to take a buy and we're still going to exit here and maybe leave one trade running should this one be broken so let's do one last time frame which is our h1 chart h1 chart and you can see that when the price moved up towards your towards your h4 resistance it actually gave you that bearish rejection kind of stick which is at what at the h4 resistance and then it still broke the range of that pin bar and then it took off that is why even if you had um even if you had a nice zone there a nice support and then you are saying it looks very strong because of what the takeoff was a gap that is true but buying there was going to be very tricky because of what where the price is coming from because i'm sorry about that i'm saying that it is going to be tricky for you to buy because of what where the price is coming from it's not a good idea for you to take a buy trade on h1 support when the price is coming from h4 resistance it doesn't make sense for you to try and fight that with your h1 structure in this case it failed the zone failed so now because that one is taken out taban would say this is a zone he likes this one but yeah so for me i would rather take this one here and say this h1 support it looks very nice it's just that it's slightly above h4 zone but it looks very nice and yes and it, it ticks most of the boxes when you're doing the assessment so should the price come here and it gives you confirmation to buy you can buy but the, the safest area to take a buy trade would be from this one which is what which is your h4 uh, support but even if the price doesn't get there maybe it touches the trend line there you know you're still inside your nice h1 support and you get the confirmation you will be allowed to take a trade to the upside so i don't know if you'll try and and um you know it's just that now if you look at it no support has been taken out yet so on this time frame we can't say it is bearish even though it is making some nice moves to the downside so that because it is not bearish even trying to sell from this it's 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 it's, it's, it's not it's not allowed you're not allowed to do that you're not bearish on this time frame so why would you want to sell when the time frame is not bearish you see so the safest way would be to say if it drops it's fine you must come to at least this h4 i mean this h1 but the strongest one or the high odd one would be the h4 level that's how you analyze that is how you analyze or you can even move lower than this it all depends on you your account size and how much time you have but i hardly do those time frames so i'm going to end here so this is basically all that i wanted to share with you i should have shared this one i could have done this uh, yesterday because normally we do our, our, our chats on on sunday but unfortunately yesterday i couldn't record but this is all this is what i wanted to share with you and so what you can you can do is that you wait for a, a pullback to this and then hope that you push up but you need to get some confirmation there so that's it guys that's all you can expect from this one and if you like this style of trading you can always uh, like i mentioned you can always contact me and then we will take things from there but otherwise this is all that i had for you guys uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and even suggest or recommend the channel to your friends so that we grow guys and we reach more people so that they can also what get this knowledge all right guys uh, i'll see you in the next video